All right. So what's going on, Tiff? You know, living life. Just getting silly, but right. Trying. That's it. So, uh, did you pick up any hobbies during this time? Anything new? I started painting a little bit. Nice. You're gonna but show that stuff off. In time, in due time. It's not like conventional painting. It's more like aggressive finger painting. That's cool. Yeah. It's like uh, abstract stuff. Super. Cool. Yeah. I'm looking forward to uh, seeing that alongside with the bullet points. I mean, the ballpoint pen, uh, pen things. No, I've been slacking on those, but I feel like in the times where I'm like not good about it, that's where I'm like experiencing and all the thoughts and stuff are formulating. And then I'll go through a phase where I'll just like spit them out all the time. Yeah. So right now it's kind of, I'm absorbing and then I'll just like spitting them out. So. Yeah, I know what you, I know what you mean. I get like that too sometimes with the art stuff. So uh, for the people that are listening right now, where me and Tiffany are just going to have a, a conversation first and then probably like 20, 30 minutes in, then we'll get it, we're going to do um, questions. Um, so with that being said, Tiffany, what I try to do with these talks is just discuss uh, what it takes to uh, get or be or stay on a, uh, on a high level. Uh, so, you know, I mean, there's always like an underlying underlying um similarity between anybody that does something on, a, on an elite level where, whether you're like a business person or you know an athlete it doesn't really matter we all we all kind of do the uh, the same things um and obviously it's difficult to be on that level as you as you already know so uh right off the bat what was one of the most difficult situations that you had to deal with in under pressure so in a fight i guess and how did you overcome that? You mean like actually in the ring, in a fight? Yeah, let's talk about that because I want to talk about when you're in that stressful situation, um, how you dealt with that. Um, the fight that comes to mind for some reason, uh, there's two. The first one that came to mind was when I fought Alexis Rufus back in like... 2013 or something in lion fight yeah. and i finished that fight by fourth round knockout but until i knocked her out i think i was losing i was losing on points in that fight yeah and um i think i remember my coach telling me going into the fourth round kind of like hey you need to pick it up like he was kind of being nice but somewhat urgent about it and I don't know, I think I just had to, like, make the mental adjustment to, to switch from being more of a, I mean, the finish started off of a counter, but instead of, it was just, like, creating more opportunities to count instead of just waiting for her to go. So yeah. I think a mental switch than anything, because physically, I mean, other than the normal, like, banged up shins and you take a couple here or there. Um, I wasn't too terribly fatigued and I wasn't too terribly injured. So for that moment, it was more about making the mental adjustment. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. um, what was the, what was that second one? The first time I fought Anissa Mexen at MSG. Yeah. In the second round, she threw a high kick. And I just barely got my glove up in time to block, but like the knuckle of her toe, my eye. So like if you push on your eye like this and then try to look at it, that's what it looked like for like the whole rest of the second round for me. Yeah. For having to like just kind of take a step back and play more of a points and distance game mm -hmm. until my eye. Yeah, actually, I've I've been in both of those um, situations. So it's funny that you mentioned that. The first one, the first one, uh, I wanted to ask you when you were going into uh, that was uh, at the end of the fourth round or going into the fourth round where you knocked her out. That was going into the fourth round. 
Yeah. So for the first fight, so when you were when you were going in there, did you feel like you were gonna knock her out, or it was just like you had to just pretty much go go at her? Had to go at her. I mean, it was yeah. close enough to like if I won the next two rounds or dominated the next two rounds, I could have pulled off the win maybe. But I was yeah. definitely cards. It wasn't like drastically, but I was definitely down. Yeah. And then the um the 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 one with the um at the MSG fight with Anissa, how uh how did you deal with that when you were in the uh in the actual ring? Like as as soon as that happened, what started going through your mind? My first thought was, oh shit, I can't see. Um, because at that point I had like doubled my vision for a second. Yeah. Longer. You know, I was able to, like, move around and stay away, but it started to clear a little bit. But um, the first thought was, oh, shit, I can't um, uh, protect that side since I was essentially blind on that side from that point. I was like, okay, get that hand up high, keep it high, and keep your distance, score points, but, like, stay out of range until your vision clears. Yeah. Um, I was, like, smarter at that point until – because I knew that – I knew the feeling. I was like, okay, it's not bleeding. It's not broken. I, just, I know it's going to clear and get, get back to normal. I just don't know how long it's going to take. Yeah. Um, what were some of the things that you were doing as far as strategy to, um, to kind of like keep her at bay so you would buy yourself time? And I was just using my movement to kind of create this mm -hmm. space. And because she's a counter fighter also, I figured if I sat back and tried to get her to come to me more, it would buy a little bit more time. Because yeah. we'd spend that time, like, fainting and moving and trying to find yeah. an entry on her. Um, and then also just to make sure it wasn't, like, I didn't want to show that I was hurt too much. Right. So I still be active in some way. So still trying to, like, throw and score points here and there. Yeah, that's exactly what I recommend to... Uh to fighters when they're when they're injured just go right right down to uh fainting make the other person think but like you said it also makes it seem like you're still doing work so you're not really you're 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 so you're showing that you're still in control and possibly controlling the fight but in a different way you're buying yourself time exactly so yeah it's like, a lot of the like active recovery i guess yeah exactly yeah there's been a lot of fights uh i would say probably almost every fight where i would get hit in the uh in the liver and uh those of you who know i mean it takes your you know breath away you can't really breathe so you have to figure out a way to uh buy yourself time and one of the best ways is like you mentioned with the faints move around stay active until you regain that uh breathing again and then boom you're you're right back at it um so men mentally speaking, how did how did you uh, how do you usually deal with your um, injuries if you have to take, um, you know, like some time off? Oh, I'm the worst. <laughs> um, um, as I'm getting older, like progressing and maturing as an athlete and as a human, I'm learning to be more patient and to be more gentle with myself. Yeah. But there's that competitive fire in me that like that just wants to do a little bit too much, a little bit too soon. You yeah. know, I want to do extra rehab so that I can get back into training faster and things like that. Um, but, you know, I am quite emotional and quite sensitive too. So I think upon, like, the initial onset of injury or not able to train or whatever, I pout. <laughs> I just straight up, I pout. I eat junk food and I get to a point where I'm just like I feel gross I hate myself this is not me I deserve yeah. better like I love but like I hate myself but I love myself enough to know that I deserve better and I'm going to give myself better so I don't know why I can't just go straight to that I have to go to the like the other way first and then go I don't know but yeah, I know what you mean. It is it is a very weird and vicious cycle too. Yeah, and it's it just doesn't yeah it doesn't end. It's like all right, I'll be motivated to kill it for a few days or a week or whatever, and then same thing. I'll just fall off. Like just yeah. emotional life. Like it's crazy times right now. 
you know, like in the world. And then, I mean, even personally, I'm going through stuff. So it's like, I'm just taking things one day at a time. Yeah, exactly. Um, what was I going to say as far as that? Oh, yeah. Uh, when you were when you were injured, what was the longest time that you had to uh, take off? Fortunately for, like, this COVID thing has been, like, the longest. Like, yeah. It's not been an injury. <laughs> but, like, for an actual injury, I would say either my uh, – my retina reattachment or my elbow surgery. But mm -hmm. those were only, I mean, eight weeks. So nothing and that was like, like not, super, super late. Yeah, and that was doing nothing for eight weeks. Well, I was supposed to do nothing for eight weeks. Yeah. I started a little bit early. Yeah, it's uh, it's difficult. But like for... with the uh, the elbow, I was still able. What were you gonna say? But uh, with the elbow surgery, I could still do stuff. I just couldn't use that arm. Yeah. The retina, I couldn't do anything that like, the the surgeon said. Imagine that your eyes are like snow globes, and so anything that would pick up a snow globe, you can't do. So oh, I couldn't damn. like. I couldn't run. I couldn't do anything where, like, I just did a lot of yoga. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what I that's what I try to tell people as well. If there's like an injury in your case where you weren't able to uh, have impact, but you went to yoga, so now you're working on your flexibility and you're still being mobile, working on the mobility as well, which is gonna in return help you with uh, kicks and movement as well. So there's always a way you can. Um, figure out another way where you can, uh, you know, still turn it into a positive. For example, I've also been in, uh, been in Thailand where I wasn't able to uh, spar. So instead of doing live sparring, I would just, uh, I would just, when I would go to sleep at night, I would imagine like I was sparring and fighting. So I was always still at least trying to have my vision uh, work. Um, so, you know, I think that kind of still uh, helps. So I was telling uh, people that, you know, there's always a way that you can figure something else out um, where you can do something, which brings me into the next thing, uh, which is about efficiency. And I'm a big, uh, big, um, big believer and, you know, somebody who strives to be as efficient as possible because we only have, as athletes especially, we only have a limited time to, uh, to you know, become as great as possible. So efficiency is key. So which sometimes translates into like the regular life too. You know, like sometimes I'll I'll do stupid things and and make sure I make coffee faster than I did, you know, the previous day or something. I mean, I get crazy with it. Um, what do you do uh, with some things that um, you know help you with uh, becoming as as efficient as possible and you know not wasting as much time. That's funny that you say that because I've been practicing more mindfulness, like doing things more slowly and being present in the moment. Interesting. Well, you know what? That can be efficiency, though, because you're, you're taking a little bit more time to think. So now you're not going to make as many mistakes as you would maybe if you were going through something uh, faster, you know? Well, it's not even like. For, it's just to be more present. Like, for example, if I'm making my coffee or my tea in the morning, mm -hmm. I'm conscious to, of when I grab the mug to feel the temperature of it and it's very smooth and I set it down and I, yeah. I put water and I listen to the sound of the water hitting the cup. Yeah. I smell the aroma of the mint. You know, like I just try to attach all of my senses to what's going on so I'm fully present in the moment. Yeah, that's interesting. That That can be in the awareness department, which I still think is extremely important uh, and, and, and a big aspect of somebody, you know, to reach a higher level is to be self-aware because a person that's self-aware has to learn, uh, you know, what they're doing right, what they're doing wrong, what their opponent is doing right, what their opponent is doing wrong. So they have to be fully aware of everything that's going on so that that way they can tighten down on 
all that um, wasted, I guess, movement, you know, and wasted time. So, yeah, that makes sense um, that you're uh, focusing on that. Another way that I practice, which I guess is, falls under the same category, if you break it down like that, is while I'm running. Um, sometimes I'll do it with my hands up, kind of over my eyes, almost not over my eyes, but like how a high guard would be. Yeah. And um, I'll pick, I'll go through one, twos, and three. So as I'm running, just using my eyes with my hands up, I try to find within my surroundings something that's single on its own. So it's like, uh, there's one stop sign. Uh, there's two birds on that telephone pole. Uh, there's three trees. And then go back down to one. So I'm training my mental and yeah. visual acuity. And I'll do it things like, all right, find three red things something in a hue of blue or like just a lot of stupid little things but I'm like playing games with my brain while I'm somewhat fatigued from running while my hands are up so I have to maintain that and then just using my eyes to kind of sight things I think like sharpen your mind and your eyes to like read openings and and fighting yeah that's a good one I like that I'm gonna have to steal that Mm -hmm. do you do you try to do you try to do that when you're actually hitting pads as well like this try to visualize or see other things that are happening uh, around you, or are you just focused on the pad pads or even sparring? With pads, I'm a little more focused on the pads and my technique and my balance and things like that. Uh, With sparring, it's more of, it's more like play time, reaction time, try to use those, those skills and that efficiency. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's cool. I had uh, my trainers once. I think they. I think this was. This is actually like a like a thing or part of a study where they did with athletes, and uh, they would have me hit the pads, and then as soon as that pad round would finish, they would have me uh, do like uh, like simple problems or like do like the. Uh, what the hell is that called when you do the XOs? Tic tac toe. Yeah, tic tac toe. We would do tic tac toe as soon as we would finish the round. And it was crazy um, that I would I wouldn't do as well um, when I when I didn't have that pressure of like finishing the rounds. I would do worse when I would do the rounds, whereas I would do a lot better when I uh, you know when we were just like playing for you know when we, when we had like free time. Yeah. So um, I think the study was like you know kind of like what you were saying when you're running, you're just trying to like sharpen your mind. This was the same same effect. Um, trying to, you know, stay as sharp as possible while you still have to uh, hit the pads and be under under pressure. Right. Yeah, it's like... In the uh, chest boxing? Yeah, what is that? Where they have, like, two guys in a boxing ring with gloves on, they box one round, and then the next round they sit down, and there's a chest oh, board, yeah. and they play chess. I don't know if, if it's also a, a three-minute round or whatever. Then they get back in the ring. They fight another round. They get back out, and they do another round of chess. It was like a league for a while. I don't know. You can find it on YouTube. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's like the same uh, concept. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, for the listeners, uh, I'm going to have you guys uh, just listen to a couple more questions, and then we'll go into uh, your uh, questions for Tiff or for me. Um, what are your thoughts on the word luck? It's for the unprepared, but it yeah. doesn't. But it doesn't what? But it doesn't hurt. Yeah. So you do believe in luck? Mm, no. Yeah, I don't believe in it either. In fact, I, I take it as disrespect when somebody says that, uh, that you need some luck or something like that because then it's like so i'm get, I'm, I'm literally all this work that i'm putting in i still need something else like thin air to help me out win the fight or you know be successful in in some some field so to me it's like so disrespectful when somebody brings in that in that word if someone wishes you luck you tell them don't tell me what to do <laughs> that's a good one <laughs> i don't know I don't know. I think it's just people trying to be nice and they have nothing else to say. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. It's... Way. I'm just like, 
I don't know if I have a little chip on my shoulder that day and someone says, good luck. In my head, I say luck is for the unprepared, but I say thank you. Yeah, exactly. I do the same thing. I say thank you, but it's not for me. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on uh, on doubts? Do you view doubts as a positive or a negative? Mm, I think anything in, in moderation, right? Like doubt can be negative to where it deters you and actually, um, you know, you believe the doubts that you have and then you you perform to that level, right? You you uh, you make the doubts true. You make them yeah. a reality. You can also use them as motivation to, if you doubt yourself somewhere or on a certain technique or in a certain aspect, if you doubt yourself there, it can be a motivation to work harder in that area or improve somewhere. But I think too much of either one can be um, harmful. So there's good to have a very, very, a very healthy amount of doubt. Um, you don't ever want to doubt yourself in any way, but there's, I think it's okay to doubt yourself to a point to where it makes you better so that you don't yeah. doubt it. Yeah, that's a good answer. I, I feel the same way about that. All right. So let's go into uh, questions. Somebody asked, um, perhaps, perhaps we can talk about opportunity. Um, yeah, I think that's a good, good, uh, topic. And I think, uh, that being an opportunist, a lot of people um, view opportunist as like a negative thing. But, you know, if you're not out there hurting somebody else, then you have to be an opportunist in, or, in, in order to, uh, again, reach a high level. If you don't take every opportunity, you, you're going to miss something out there. How do you feel about opportunity and opportunist? Opportunities and opportunists. I think there are a lot of opportunists. And if you see an opportunity to take advantage of somebody or something, then I don't think it's okay. Then you're crossing your ethical and moral boundaries and stuff right. there. But if it's an opportunity that's going to enhance you or make you better or teach you something, then absolutely go for it. Yeah. There's yeah, I mean, if you're if you're in a fight, yeah, if you're in a fight in the ring and, you know, somebody does like a, like a kick and then you evade the kick and their back is right there, that's your opportunity. You have to take that. Oh, uh, protect uh, yourself. Right, right exactly. If you're in the for a fight, you're not there to, you know, play tag, so. Yeah. Um, do you find it hard to watch your own fights, wins or losses? This is from J.F. Howell. That's a really good question. Uh, I have a hard time watching for I lost or I used to. I always have to like, I'll watch it right away, right after the fight. And then I won't look at it again for like a few weeks. Once the emotions and everything have kind of like settled and then I'll start watching again to dissect it. But, um, it's just an ego thing, you yeah. know, you don't like to see yourself get, bettered or bested or beat anyway. right. but again you watch it through through the lenses of learning and improvement you know you put the ego away you make it shut up and mm -hmm. you know it's one of your greatest tools yeah so, um, but yeah it's just it's hard to do yeah I know what you mean and uh, I think for people out there I think if they just give everything that they can from themselves when they're training, whether it's, you know, for a fight or whatever you guys are working on. And then if you still fail, um, you know, you still, you, 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 there's nothing else you could, you could possibly do. You know I mean? You checked all the boxes off. So uh, whether you win or lose, um, you know, always go back and study that material because you can always find, and in fact, I think the fights where you won, I think those are even more important to uh, study and uh, learn from than the ones where you lost because the losses are apparent. You know where you made the mistakes, but the wins is like very difficult to find where you made those small little uh, mistakes in the in the details. So I think those are even more uh, important to um, study. Um, how many hours? This is from K 
Kautar666. How many hours a week do you work out? <clears throat> right now or when I'm in training camp? <laughs> I guess when you're in training camp. <laughs> um, a week? Um, I don't know, two, roughly two two-hour sessions a day, six days. Mm -hmm. Four times six, yeah. Yeah, you know, add recovery and probably like 30. Yeah. What about you? Um, I don't know, but it's probably about the same two to three hours. But I, I, I don't want people to think that like you need to spend your whole day in the gym or people, you know, people that talk about being in the gym three times a day, going in for three sessions, it's unnecessary. I think you're doing something wrong if you're in the gym that long. You know, I think morning evening session that's all you need to spread it out and i've been in situations where you know i was i was working my nine to five uh job as a graphic designer my my career job i was you know obviously i had to fit everything in in one session so i would work from nine to five and then train from literally five to nine and i was able to fit everything in to that one session that was that was like the worst time of my life but it was possible so you can fit everything in within a few hours you know uh, so I don't think um, people need to obsess over how many days or how many hours you spend in the gym. I think it's all always about quality over uh, quantity, as you know, as everybody says. And also, um, you can get a great workout in within like I don't know an hour, forty-five minutes. You can get a great workout. And now for us, maybe it'll be different, diff different because you know we have to fit in pad work, we have to do clinching, we have to do sparring. So we have a couple of different things, but if you're just trying to uh, get in shape, 30 minutes, that's all you need, 30 minutes a day. And you're gonna be, you're gonna lose weight and you're gonna be in shape, as long as you put in that um, quality work. Um, was there a time when you guys had day jobs while training? When you did, how much time did you spend training a day? This is from Simi P. So I basically just answered that question. But what about you, um, Tiff? Yeah, I was working <clears throat> at one point um, when I think within my first few pro fights, I was still in school. Mm -hmm. I finished my degree and I was working at, I think, three different gyms teaching Muay Thai and training people. And then doing personal training on the side, like at the beach and in the parks and at people's houses. Yeah. And stuff. In between like a class at school or training a client or teaching a class at a gym, in between any of that, I would be getting sessions in. Yeah. And, and just to let people know, um, this is the type of stuff that you have to do in order to be where Tiffany's at or anybody that's at a high level. Those are the sacrifices that you have to make. You have to be willing to just say fuck to everything else and just dedicate your whole time into believing what you want to uh, to achieve. So I'm sure that was uh, very difficult for you to do. I didn't sleep much and I ran on monster energy. Yeah. Uh, the SB kid, Tiffany, you're awesome. Kellyana, why he's so cute. <laughs> uh, topic, give me advice to be pro boxer. Um, you got to just dedicate time to him, man. That's it. You, If you're already on an amateur level, keep going, study my new details, and you're going to eventually get there. What about you, Tiff? What do you think? What, how to be a pro boxer? Yeah. <laughs> level if you want to be a professional right yeah it's all it's all those small little steps so keep dedicating your time and you'll and you'll get there um this is from kautar again how do you stay motivated i fucking hate that word and this is no disrespect to you kautar but i'll i'll give you my my answer when Tiffany gives hers i'll be completely honest i'm not always motivated so trying to stay motivated is a, it's not about being motivated. It's about knowing you have a job to do and doing it. 
Yeah. I find that as I'm getting a little bit older, uh, like I like to train when I know I have something coming up and I know there's money coming in. So I'll work, I'll work hard for my money, you know, yeah. but until I know that that's happening, I mean, I'm still going to train and take care of my body and improve, but I'm not going to be not motivated, I guess, to today. It's about trying harder, not harder. Once you get to a certain point, right? I want. I know I'm. I'm reaching kind of the second half of my career, and I want it to be as explosive and more dynamic, but even healthier than the beginning. So I felt like early in my career, I was like learning on the job as I went. Mm-hmm. You know, now that I do have a lot more experience and knowledge, um, you know, it's my first time being a more mature athlete I've never been this age before but my body feels um, like as strong and mature and, and as balanced <clears throat> and as I've ever been so um, you know I just really want to take care of it and take advantage of, of you know these next few four or five years and, and really just to make it count yeah yeah, for me, it's, um, you know, like you were saying, it's about it's about work. I don't I don't really like the motivation thing. I don't think we need motivation. It's like, it's, it's bullshit for me because motivation is going to, you know, I, I can watch like a nice, nicely produced video that motivates me. And then I get outside and I have to run and I'm like, man, fuck this shit. I hate running. You know, I don't, I don't enjoy training at all, but I don't have to enjoy it. That's not the point. The point is my end goal what's the end goal to win more titles to be on a high level to be as great as possible that as great of a fighter that i can be that's that's the motivation right there it's not the day-to-day stuff i'm not motivated to train ever i hate training it's the worst but it's the uh end goal that that keeps me i guess motivated uh you guys are both badass from janice thank you um you're not having enough fun when you train then if you don't like it i fucking hate training <laughs> i gotta change something i guess um do you do problems in your personal life affect your training positively or negatively this is from my friend both <laughs> i think in the beginning it negatively affects me and then i flip the switch and cool and then it positively affects me. Yeah, so is it for you just changing that switch and then you're like, fuck this negative shit, I gotta be positive about it and then that's it? Like, I don't know if it's a conscious the feeling where it's like, like, I mean, I'm really, really, really cerebral. Like, I'm in my head a lot. And so when I'm, I can go through a training session with like the worst thing on my mind or the most stressed go through an entire training session leave the like what did I do in training no I'm exhausted but still consciously I wasn't there because I was like whatever so I know I'm better off just like letting it do what it needs to do and then yeah. it affects me because I'm not there mentally in training or I'm just so messed up that I physically just don't go mm-hmm you reach that point where I get fed up, it, it, uh, fuel and the motivation. Yeah. It really like so much. Um, this is from Tuto. Do you practice visualization? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's important too. Um, this is from Joey Joe. How do you get over fear of re-injuring old injuries, like not holding back and protecting? Mm. I think just flow into it until eventually you pick up 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%. Eventually it'll be at that 100% again. Yeah, I think I think for me, I'm dealing with uh, with a cut on my shin, 
and um, it's been cut open uh, three times now. So I know it's going to happen again in a fight. And, uh, and every time it happens, I have to, you know, stay out for like a month. So for me, now it's focusing on how can I still continue to fight, fight and uh, still be able to use my right leg uh, where the shin cut is, uh, but not re-injure it again or do my best not to. So for me, it's about creating better fakes now. You know, I have to be very smart about sneaking in the kick where I can, you know, hit on the ribs or cleanly on, on a low kick rather than, you know, when the, when the uh, fighter blocks. So obviously this is going to be a lot more difficult than dealing with when you, you know, don't have a cut, but I don't care. It's, it's going to be, it's, it's a new challenge for me. And that's how I look at it. So I'm not looking at it as a negative thing. I'm looking at it as a positive thing. So for me, that's basically how I deal with um, injuries. So more quality and more accurate kicks versus quantity. Correct. Uh, do you follow boxing? Because we got a boxing question from Duqueso. Not too much. No? All right. She's not going to know this. Uh, hard work and dedication makes you great fighters. Thank you. This is from Janice. Uh, okay. What kind of music hear you both in your training sessions? What kind of music do you listen to in your training session? I listen a little bit of everything. Reggae or... Mix it up, right? House music or yeah. spicy music. I don't know. I'm just going to that day. That's it. Um, who do you uh, look up to? One boxer, one martial artist, and one mo motivational leader. Uh, this is from Lewis. Do you have any of those people in your life that you look up to? One boxer, uh, yeah. I like Willie Pep. Nice. Martial artist, was that the other one? Martial artist. Yeah. Uh, Bruce Lee, duh. <laughs> and one motivational, motivational what? Figure, speaker, yeah. person. Yep. Mm. I don't know. I haven't really been following too much lately um glennon doyle i don't know if that's motivational or whatever but like self-help type thing yeah cool. so that's a good one yeah all right we're gonna do a couple more questions somebody wrote uh oh ella romano wrote whitney houston yeah i listened to her when i trained he's actually from our gym um what did you do differently different the last time you fought An uh, anisa um, I went forward a lot more and I didn't give her as much time to set or move. I was just in her face a lot more and I was a little bit more mean. Yeah. No respect. Yeah. No respect. <laughs> um, do you have, do you have anything lined up for that? For the next, for, what? Uh, for uh, Glory? I was supposed to fight May 30th, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> the Rona. The Rona. Um, one last question. Do you like swimming or running for cardio? I like surfing. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm that's actually good. Yeah. But, uh, running and dancing for cardio. Nice. Yeah, when we did the, uh, the surfing thing at On It, mm -hmm. man, that was, that was a killer. It was like an old right. body workout. Yeah. yeah. Shoulders, or if you get to like actually stand up and like your legs can burn and stuff too. It's everything. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, we've reached our time limit. Thank you, Tiffany, for uh, coming on. I had a great talk. Thank you. Hopefully, it's we nice can do it again. You. Yep. All right. Thanks. Enjoy your uh, weekend. Thank you. You too. Thanks, everybody. Take Thank care of you yourselves. Guys.